Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about barriers. I've been getting a lot of issues and questions about barriers. I would say 50% of the calls we get deal with noise and 50% deal with absorption and diffusion. So let's talk about barriers because there's so much confusion. People are using absorption and diffusion to treat noise and you can't do that. They're separate sciences. One is dealing with airborne energy within the room. One is vibrational acoustics, which is the transmission of noise or sound through a structure. This, the physics and the sciences are the same in a lot of areas, but the overlap between the two disciplines is where real understanding and solutions occur. And that, I think that's what people struggle with. They think that if I absorb a lot of energy inside the room, less will get out. Well, that may or may not be the case, depends on frequency, depends on amplitude. So hopefully, you know, this little overview will help us a little bit. So we know that noise is generated, let's just, I, don't, I, don't, I think noise may be a bad word for a music inside of a room, but for purposes of this video, let's just call everything noise. So noise inside the room, leaving the room is an issue. Noise generated by garbage trucks, sirens, etc., outside the room, coming into the room, is the issue. So it's kind of like a two-way gate, a valve, if you will. So we don't want either. We don't want noise coming in, and we don't want noise leaving, okay? So we know that in our room, there's two parts to our room, okay? There's the external wall, which we're going to call the shell, and then the in part of the room, which is for absorption and diffusion. So today, we're going to focus on the shell, okay? Because that's where noise comes in and noise leaves. So the wall or the structure or the shell of our room is what we need to focus on, okay? So we need to, when we're measuring noise, we need to quantify and qualify the frequency of the noise and the amplitude. Okay, so is the noise from the garbage truck 40 hertz, which most of it is? How strong is it? Okay, is it 90 dB SPL? Okay. So that's what we have to keep in mind, these two numbers. So in our situation here, we got a noise issue from a garbage truck at 40 cycles, and it's 90 dB SPL. Now what do those two numbers mean? Okay, They tell us what kind of barrier or shell we have to build. There's a direct correspondence to the frequency and the strength of it. I mean, it's just common sense. I usually don't tell people to use common sense when it applies to physics because at least today I find, you know, there's no, nothing common about sense. Everybody's sensibilities are different based on a whole host of factors. But that's why we have to quantify and qualify. So we got a 40 cycle problem at 90 dB SPL. Those two numbers tell us how we build our shell. Now that's just for noise getting in. We could have a 40 cycle problem inside the room. Now what instrument would generate that? A kick drum on a drum set. And we could have neighbors that don't want to hear the kick drum. So the source is kind of irrelevant. It's the frequency of the issue and how strong it is that we have to deal with it, okay? So for every frequency and every amplitude, there is a material that we have to use. And it doesn't matter if the noise is coming from the room and leaving or coming outside and coming into the room. It doesn't matter. We need to build a barrier that stops this two-way interaction. And the barrier is frequency and amplitude dependent. The materials that we use to stop this 40 cycle energy at 90 dB from a garbage truck is different than the materials we use to stop people from talking outside the room. Completely different, okay? And there's really no place that you can go that's going to tell you what materials to use. You have to use experience. 
I've been doing this a long time. I've built a lot of rooms. I think we're up to 155 right now. So I have the benefit of all of those years of experience and all of those years of testing. So we have a great database on noise and treatment based on room size and volume. And it's based on experience and measurements. So I can tell what kind of shell we're gonna need to stop what frequency and how strong that noise is. I know how, what materials we use for that. I know what materials we use to stop two people from talking outside our room from listening to those conversations inside the room. I have all that data. Okay, that's why our noise time study takes measurements over seven days. Because if you're using your room over seven days, you wanna be able to go into the room any time of the day and work. So when we take our seven day noise time study with our noise uh, design schedules, we we look at the noise generated from over seven days and we get minimums, or I'm sorry, we get minimums and maximums of noise. We always design for the maximum. Because if we design the barrier or the shell for the maximum noise problem, the minimums take care of themselves. It's kind of like axial modes, treating those and the tangential and obliques follow. Same kind of relationship. So we always have to quantify and qualify. So people always call me and they say, well, I hear this, I hear that, what do I need to do to stop this noise? And my first response always is quantify and qualify. We have to measure because the frequency and the amplitude have a direct dependency on what we're used to build. And remember, noise technology, building barriers is four to five times more expensive than absorption and diffusion in our rooms. So we have to be very, very careful here with the noise. We don't wanna guess. We don't wanna make mistakes. Because if we guess and we build something without measuring first, we may have to tear it down, start over. We may not be able to fix it. And it happens all the time. And I try to tell people, measure, measure, measure. It's like in, in carpentry. Measure twice, cut once. Because after you cut, the piece is ruined if it's not the right size. So measure twice to make sure you get it. So we measure first, then we build, okay? And we guarantee our, our results. There's no problem. If it doesn't work, we'll give you your money back. But we, we've done enough of these that we know it will work. Now, do you have the budget to fix the noise problem? Here's where the, the shoe pinches a bit. Most people don't. Most people don't have four to five times the dollars than they do the treatment. So you got to live with the noise. Or we treat as much as budget will allow and live with the rest. But at least you'll know what you have to live with. I can tell you, well, on certain days, based on your budget and the shell that we're allowed to build with the money available, you're going to hear a little bit of that garbage truck Tuesday morning. So maybe you can't do your mixing or re your recording on Tuesday mornings. And see, that's, to me, horrible. Because if you're a creative person, and you get an idea, you want to be able to go into your room and act on it. You don't want to say, oh, it's Tuesday morning, the garbage truck's going to come, or the plane's flying overhead. I can't record. Okay, but it's better to know than, you know, to be surprised. So measuring, quantifying, and qualifying takes all the guesswork out. Here's another thing with barriers. You don't spend any more money than you have to because it's a permanent build. Okay, you're not going to get that money back. And you don't want to spend more and add more materials than you need because you could use that money for absorption and diffusion. So we want to spend just enough to solve the problems once we identify the frequency and amplitude. So I hope that helps. We got to measure, measure, measure first, okay? And then once you send me the information on the measurements, I can design the wall for you and send you the drawing and you can build it. It's no problem and we guarantee our work. So barriers, frequency, and amplitude dependent. Measure, 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 and then build the right barrier. And you'll be 100% fixed and 100% right. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. 
We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.